after you're like a, a baby, a child, and a kid, if you're lucky enough, you know what I'm saying? After you're a child, bro, you know what I'm saying? Welcome to another episode of Pick a Struggle. This is Dre Day, all day, every day. And I'm here, of course, with my co-host with the most, LaPree. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Right. I'm, I'm good so far. How you doing? I'm tired. Girl, you'll be all right. But uh, I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but this episode is very special to us. In particular, because I remember when we had first started doing this, LaBrie was like, you know, we got to talk about we, we got to talk about segregation and desegregation and the black struggle and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was put on the back burner 
And then last week after we had ended our last show, I had text for some reason. So I'm just like, let me text LaPri and be like, you know, this is what we need to talk about. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that today, this weekend and this month and the beginning of next month, we are coming up on um, anniversaries mm-hmm. that were very important to the history of black people and the history of this country. And it was just weird mm-hmm. that it happened. And I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe in, you know, oh, you know, just I believe in divine plan, divine intervention and all the other stuff. So it wasn't an accident that somehow while I'm sitting on the side of my bed thinking about stuff, mm-hmm. I was thinking to myself, we should talk about this. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I had text LaPri and she was, she said, okay, cool. Let's talk about it. Right. She been ready to talk about <laughs> it. She been cocked and ready and loaded to talk about it. But, um, I wanted to, that, that song is just really close to me, especially stuff that's been going on now and stuff that has happened is very close. Every time I hear about it, I'd be wanting to cry. Mm-hmm. Just thinking about what our ancestors had went through and all this other stuff. Right. But we're coming up on anniversaries of certain things that happened in the black community. And so we're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Let's so talk about this struggle, right? The main struggle of the black community on how, um, what happened or what has happened or, you know, and stuff that, happening now how did basically the conversation is how did segregation or desegregation or both the two go hand in Mm -hmm. hand how did the both affect the black community and if we can like if we go through the history of stuff Mm -hmm. very quickly we're going to talk about you know where do we go from here because in order to go forward sometimes you got to look in the rearview mirror Mm -hmm. you got to know your past before you move forward Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about it. Okay. Let's and, talk about it. Right. And that's the reason why I picked that song. Cause that song was very, uh, ported and very, um, it was, um, it was right what, there with us. It was right there with us right during the, the, the yeah. civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to go through, excuse me. We're going to go through a, a brief history on the, the history of black people before or after, um, after the Civil War, mm-hmm. and then during uh, segregation, the Jim Crow laws, and then af- uh, then the period of desegregation, mm-hmm. and then how do we apply that history into us moving on into the future? Right. Oh, Jesus, that was a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know, today, March 17th, is the history, I mean, is the anniversary of the Brown forces the Brown versus Board of Education, mm-hmm. where um, did, 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 66 years, which I didn't, it ain't, it ain't been that long, been that long. Mm-hmm. and that's one of the things that gets on my on my nerves when white people is mainly white people mm-hmm. where they're like, oh, slavery and all the other stuff was just so long ago, right? Let's forget about yeah, it, yeah, let's, let's forget about on. it. Y'all don't know nothing about this and that, and, all, and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, my grandmother was alive, who's still alive. Both my grandmothers are still alive. Both my grandfathers had passed on, uh, you know, may they rest in peace. But my grandmothers who were alive at that time lets me know this ain't that long ago. Mm-hmm. And so today, March 17th, was the anniversary of the um, the Brown versus uh, Board of Education where they were like schools had to be separate, but they can be equal. They can be in- integrated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, not integrated, but separate, but equal. What you mean, but equal? Like the, mm-hmm. the black schools get what the white schools get, right? Yeah, that's how it was supposed to be. Okay. Where blacks didn't have to go to the schools with the whites, mm-hmm. and but it was like, okay, I'm gonna need them to um, make it equal to where we get the equal amount or oh, like of, the of same education. type of education, yeah, books, school, you know, of supplies, all that. All stuff. that. Okay. And then I then I didn't really I totally forgot about Juneteenth. Mm-hmm. Juneteenth, I remember when I was in either high school or middle school, mm-hmm. there was like 
black people in our community in the community that I had lived in, they was they were saying we don't need to celebrate July the fourth because or July fourth because mm-hmm. that's not that's when not black people yeah day. that's not a part of our history. Mm-hmm. That's when the United States as a country was liberated from European uh, hold. Mm-hmm. But Juneteenth, which is June nineteenth, mm-hmm. which is coming up in a couple of weeks in a few weeks that is also another anniversary where um the the government was like slavery is abolished Mm -hmm. which is weird because some people don't know only what seven years ago Mm -hmm. mississippi finally abolished slavery what you mean in 2000 in 2013 slavery was technically still legal on you know the state laws under the state laws. Wow, I and, didn't know that. Yeah, and it wasn't until two thousand thirteen. Now I remember reading that when I was a kid. It went, you know, way back then. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, they just now? Mm-hmm. Did they just find out Abraham Lincoln was shot? Right. Like what? What, <laughs> <laughs> what was they waiting on? Right. Yeah. For some reason, they didn't introduce certain documents and all this other stuff. But I was like, what took y'all so long? Mm. It's, it's wow. been too long. And then we're also coming up on the anniversary of Black Wall Street that was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, in Greenwood. Because mm-hmm. it was May the 31st mm-hmm. when it was bombed. Mm-hmm. by Bombed and looted by and white it's, people. It's it crazy. Was a riot. Something yeah. that makes me mad about that is like white people put it in books and textbooks and they call it the Tulsa race riot. Right. That wasn't a race riot. That was a massacre. It was a massacre. No, it, yeah. it, it well, was a massacre. It was I feel a like massacre. A riot is, but is, technically, race riots were going on at that time. Well, not and really. It, I was Tulsa, it Oklahoma of, was was like the most important one because not it wasn't um, that extraneous because I don't. It think wasn't that big of a thing. It wasn't groups of black people jumping in trucks with pitchforks right. and shotguns it was and so going out yeah. for white people. It was white people doing that to black people. And it know? started off a newspaper article. It wasn't like it was already. I mean, it was very much tension. You know, when you get successful blacks and then you have I was gonna say you yeah. know yeah. maybe yeah. not so successful white people there's gonna be racial tension but it started off a news article that was purely made up about a black man so called touching a white oh well he was 19 she was 17 yeah. so called touching her on the elevator but when it was when they were when they questioned her she said nothing happened you know or no she didn't she didn't want she didn't even testify. testify yeah that means that there was no nothing that yeah. happened for them to you know start do what they did do, doing black wall streets so, i mean so they just did that just because yeah, yeah. they, they didn't have no reason up. yeah they man. was already riled up over and it. after reading that i was just like i was thinking to myself i am purely done with white people crying crying Crying, like literally, like mm-hmm. crying, crying tears, and mm-hmm. <laughs> feel sorry for. Me. After that, I was just, I'm, I'm done with. It. After reading about Emmett Till and mm-hmm. reading about the guy in Oklahoma, the black uh, teenager in Oklahoma, all he wanted to do was just make a living. He mm-hmm. dropped out of high school, wanted to make a living doing shoe shining in downtown Tulsa, mm-hmm. and ended up getting in this debacle with this white woman that basically lied. Yeah. After that, I'm I'm done with white people crying about anything. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we're coming up on that anniversary also, mm-hmm. where because the teen that was um, being what being charged with possibly violating this white woman Mm -hmm. that was the start or that was like the the camel that broke the camel's back Mm -hmm. that you know that led into the Tulsa Oklahoma thing Mm -hmm. and that was May the 31st and April the 1st but oh my goodness when it comes to when it comes to these particular topics, you can be, you know, it's very sensitive. Yeah. And I remember talking to someone, and I think you had either agreed with me or kind of, you you know, we were talking about it, mm-hmm. how life was better or somewhat better mm-hmm. before slavery had ended or before the desegregation of the country. Yeah. I, I think it was better... Um Ec- uh, social, social wise, yeah, maybe not economically, but um, black people had their own communities. Well, hell, economically, it was better for black people before, right? Se- in that, right in that setting, but like overall, probably not, you know, because you didn't have the right to do this, you didn't have the right to do that, you mm-hmm. couldn't go here, you couldn't drink out this water fountain. Um, but just 
overall, when you talk about the black community in itself, they were better off because it was both parents in the house. There was a, a more sense of love and community, and they had more children. They took care of each other, the children. Yeah. The neighbors took care of everybody's kids. The teachers taught better. You know, they, they look forward to life with inside of what they were doing. Right, and then after... Ooh, excuse me. And then after the desegregation mm -hmm. where, okay, black people will let you go anywhere and everywhere you want to. Mm -hmm. After that, there was no sense of community anymore right. because mm -hmm. a good chunk of the communities that were black only where black people owned the homes that were there. Mm -hmm. Black people were owners of the businesses Black people were the teachers. Black mm -hmm. people were the pharmaceutical who were working in pharmaceuticals and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. After that, black people were like, oh, "Okay, well, since I can go where white people can, then I'm, I'll just go there then." Mm -hmm. Because a good chunk of those, because they feel like they might have better treatment or they'll get better service or whatever, whatever yeah. you can, whatever you you know right. feel like they were gonna get better because and then their neighborhoods were basically like burned down mm -hmm. like what happened down. in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So mm -hmm. there was no um there was no ability to rebuild. Mm -hmm. And so when their um when their neighborhoods have burned down or been tortured by white people it was like, okay, well, let me go where the white people can't go because I can't go where I used to go because it's no longer there. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where, um, which is called the Black Wall Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where with everything, they had movie theaters. Um, they had everything. Everything. Doctor's black office, homeowners, yes, yes. black pharmaceutical companies, black, black grocery store, black banks, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then... When it finally burned down, the people who actually survived the riot, mm -hmm. well, I don't even know if I want to call it a riot because... I call it a massacre. I'm yes, with Gary on that one. Right. When they survived the massacre, mm -hmm. they went into internment camps. Yeah, they lived in Before tents. World War II, before there was Jews being locked up in the camps, you know, over there in Europe, mm -hmm. there were black people in... Um, in particular camps or in jail or whatever and the white people who actually started or was involved in it was able to go mm -hmm. but with those black people they were technically homeless because yeah. i remember listening to this one guy and a couple of people where they were saying they remember when they were kids and hiding under the bed and people had came in and burned the house down mm. and they had to run and leave and the police end up catching them and end up putting them into these particular camps. And then when they was released, there really wasn't that much effort put into you in them actually, you know, with, with them being released. Right. They were mainly released because white people had wh white business owners had these particular jobs that black people only did. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, we need these Negroes. Mm -hmm. Can you release them? We and so them. eventually all of them were released, but they really didn't have nowhere to go. They had to build tents. And then after they built the tents, they tried to rebuild Greenwood, which was in Tulsa, which is the black wall street. Mm -hmm. There were more laws and more restrictions put onto, um, building buildings yeah. and how to do certain things so they really weren't <clears throat> able to rebuild it and uh, so much has happened mm -hmm. so much has been going on mm -hmm. and it's uh... but it's part of it's it's part of who we are now um i'm not saying that any of that stuff that happened that went on with black with black people um was okay but it did make us a stronger people a stronger minded people yeah we can't overcome so much more than our white counterparts because of the things that we have been through through history it's kind of like instilled in us even if we never was taught about it at home it's just internally in us to be yeah. able to overcome some of those hardships i mean look mm -hmm. at uh, everything that's happened since segregation desegregation integration look at everything that's happened since civil rights i mean we don't we don't been you know incarcerated killed and been in the white house like it's a wide spectrum of possibilities for black people and we have overcome every single thing that's the reason why it's still an issue for everybody yeah, else and, and, and that's the funny part even though we have quote unquote overcome we shall overcome. <laughs> like, even though we've overcome the fact that we're still fighting 
the same, same things. Fight. Yeah. That were, like, it, well, like when it comes to voting, black people were able to vote. In, I think it was like 1865 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And but it had like extra whole bunch of foolishness. Yeah. yeah. You had to be able to read. You can vote if you stick right. on your left leg. And there was a poll tax and all this other stuff. foolishness. Yeah. Like, even though we had that back in the day, but even now, we're, we're still fighting the same thing because th- it was um, the woman in, in uh, Georgia. I totally forgot her name and what she was running for. But it was um, like extra things put on to people mm-hmm. to make them able to vote. Mm-hmm. There's extra voting laws put on to, and they really you they disenfranchise the people who are the low income people. Mm-hmm. Like we're still we're still fighting that, and then the police are still killing us, mm-hmm. and then people who do citizens arrests are still killing us because mm-hmm. that that happened like a month ago with Arbery. Mm-hmm. Like st- we're still dealing with modern day lynchings. Absolutely. We're still we're still dealing with the same things that happened or started about like. A hundred or two hundred years ago, and mm-hmm. it's, you know what? What's 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 the, what's the deal? I feel like um, we are a better. I I, I wouldn't want to go back to segregation. I mean, even though I feel like maybe I prefer segregation. Segregation had no protection. Like none at all. Like literally, the police, anybody, a little boy could go into a black home and just go do whatever he wanted to do. Yeah. Now we do have a little bit of protection. It might not be the the type of protection. I feel like I'm too close to this thing. It might not be no, the type of protection. You, you good? Trust me. I feel I, I, I heard. I heard a tap 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 tap. Like you a, good? Oh. Uh, doing segregation <laughs> when we were segregated, we didn't have any protection from police. We didn't have any laws that that govern yeah. us as a people. Now we do have some laws. Now I'm not saying that we there yet, but I'm just saying I wouldn't want to be back in that space. Yeah, I feel like we are in a better space as people. Well, now everything else that comes with it is part of it. Yeah. Even though you say that we do have rights because we're because now we're considered humans, humans right now. But even though we have those rights, those rights are constantly being violated. Right. So are are they rights? Are they privileges? Like what? Like what? Why are we still fighting? Why are we still dealing with the same things that we dealt with years ago? Because it is that's that's part of it. I mean, compared to if we compare ourselves to other nations and other countries, we. We're still doing better. No, uh, uh, I mean, if you if you you can't tell you can't say that the 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 struggles that we have here in America are worse than the struggles that some Africans have. I feel like the struggles may be a little bit worse over there. They might yeah. not have government help and government protection, but but girl, the Bible the Bible say no sin is greater than the other. So when you know, when, it, when, it, stop when it when it when it whatever we want to. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, right? But when it comes like the post I had shared with you earlier, mm-hmm. when it comes to talking about how corrupt a nation is, mm-hmm. America or the United States itself should not talk about or compare itself to other nations right because if it wasn't for black people or indians or native americans Mm -hmm. you know as a whole without that whole thing happening there would be this still would be called a turtle island as the native americans call it it would still be called that if it wasn't for us and the native americans Mm -hmm. so it was like i i don't want to I don't like comparing us to other countries that are other that are corrupt. Also, I'm not talking about corruption. I'm talking about protection rights. How how much yeah, freedom we have but over the, here? The fact that they're versus. violated, it's corruption. Well, I'm not talking about the violation of nothing. I'm just saying that the freedom that we have as Americans yeah. is is out far ways what they have over there. I mean, if you just listen to some, if you, if you have any African friends or you follow any type of the African culture, you will know that we have, uh, you know, they, the government gives us money. They give us food stamps. They give us housing. They give us <sighs> medical. They don't have all that over there. Yeah. They don't have it as accessible as we have it. So that's all I'm saying. But back to our our American history. Um, (laughs) We are better off than we were in in segregation. But I'm not saying that we don't have a, we still don't have a fight. But are we though? We are. Like I said, we we have so so much more protection and rights than we had back then. Back then, they couldn't even walk down the street. They had to be, they had to condition their children to learn how to grow up black. Now we, we, I mean, we still have to have those talks. Like, listen, you're a black man. 
you know, when he tell you to right. step out the car, and, step see, out the car. That's that's the problem I have. Mm-hmm. Even though, like you said, we you know we're better off than before. Mm-hmm. The fact that we we're still having to have these conversations, like if. If things were the way they were supposed to be according to the Constitution, the laws, and all that stuff, if that stuff was true Mm -hmm. and we had examples, we wouldn't be sitting here in 2020 still talking about the same stuff that happened back in the day. Yeah. But the Constitution wasn't written for us. Yeah, it wasn't. Originally, no. I mean, that's why we have these conversations. We were never included when they said all men and under God, they weren't including black people. They was talking about whites only. Right. It's always been a white only European show. descendant at first. Yeah. yeah. It's always been whites only pie in this country. I mean, we just decided that we want a little piece of it too cause we, because we made it. We built it. Yeah. So. I just hate the Because 200 years. Yeah. 200 or 100 plus years later. 240 we, years. We're still talking about how the police are doing this wrong. Mm-hmm. Communities are doing this wrong. And then I think it was uh, it was a couple of years ago where well first of all in um, I want to say in the eighteen hundreds late eighteen hundreds early nineteen hundreds you can discriminate people when it come when it came to like buying homes and buying land and all the other stuff mm-hmm. but yet two or three years ago I was listening to NPR news mm-hmm. and this black woman was on there and mm-hmm. she's a lesbian. Mm-hmm. And she talked about how she had a job. Well, yeah, she had a job, made good money, and applied for a home loan, and they denied her. Mm-hmm. And then her girlfriend, who was white, didn't have a job, mm-hmm. hasn't worked in years, applied for a home loan, and got it. Mm-hmm. And so we're still dealing with that's that redlining. Yeah, we're we're still we're still dealing with stuff like that, and that's the. That's the part that keeps me up at night. That's the part that mm-hmm. gets on my nerves sometimes when it comes to quote unquote equality yeah. and we're all made the same and you know we're all Americans and all this other stuff. It only applies when they need us. Yeah. When they need us to yeah. fight for them. Civil war. Yeah. It's that's uh, the only time we out of the here. world wars, yeah. Yeah. Any other time you over there and I'm over here. And that's crazy to learn and the now that you brought it up, it was funny that back then in World War Two or World War One, slavery was still there. Mm-hmm. I mean, not slavery, but uh, Jim Crow laws were there. Yeah. And the fact that a black person can enlist in the army mm-hmm. and fight with his with other people, other white people or whatever, in yeah. World after I think it was like World War Two. But the fact that he was able to fight along with white people, and then when he came back into the United States, yeah, yeah, he had to drink out of a certain water, water fountain. fountain. Yeah. It was like, make it make sense to me. Mm-hmm. That's not making sense to me. And uh, I just can't, I can't get over the past because we as a black community have, have not gotten over it. Mm-hmm. And we need to have these conversations and we need to um, learn from our past in order to get over it. Because mm-hmm. now in 2020, we have all these pages and all these conversations on. Uh, support black people, so black board, uh, black, support black businesses and all this other stuff. But we're still not technically making the effort. So it's like, what's what what's going on mm-hmm. in that? How come we're not? And I, I think that the conversation needs to be more open in these households. I mean, um, if these parents would sit down with their children, they black children, even they white children, whoever, whatever child is in your house, right. sit down with these kids and explain to them what their history. Because like you said in the beginning of the show, you can't go for it if you don't even know where you've been or where you're at. Yeah, You know what I mean? We can't, we can't expect for our kids to be... Um, I ain't gonna even say pro black, but to support black people or black businesses or any of that, if they don't know why they doing it, yeah, they be like, well, this black businesses, they they take longer to get your food out. <laughs> they might be a little a little more ruder, you know. what I'm saying they might be a little bit more um, what you call it, expensive. Uh, expensive. Or what, so yeah. why am I supporting them when I can go right over here to this, you know, Latino yeah. restaurant and get the same thing for a cheaper price and a a better attitude and I'm not saying that black people have attitudes but we know how we are sometimes in our settings so yeah. let's just be real because we all all yeah. races have yeah. our races have, have those people have those people but sometimes the neck get to working when you go in the barbecue spot <laughs> anyway <laughs> <laughs> 
if we explain to our children why it's important for us to support one another, then we can. We can get over this hump, and we can maybe even get back to a uh, black Wall Street or a black community where everything is thriving and everything is good, you know, economically, socially, all that. But we have to talk. We have to talk. We have to have these type of com- um, conversations, conversations yeah. more often and for longer time, periods of time. It just right. got to happen more. And I talk to my kids about... Because I was going to say, what What do you talk to your kids? Because I know with me... Because I, I know with me, my sister... I have a little sister. She's like 13 years younger than me. Mm-hmm. And I remember she's in a private school. Right. and or Not private, but charter. Charter, okay. I got you. And um, it was February. It was Black History Month. I had picked her from school. And I said, well, girl, you know, girl, tell me what, you know, what they talking about in the school today. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was like, oh, you know, I did this class. Okay, what y'all talking about? We talking about black history. Okay, what they say? Oh, mm-hmm. um, I really don't know. And I was like, well, okay, girl, oh, oh, well, let me tell you now. Right. Everything came from black people. Mm-hmm. Everything. The, right. Literally. Yeah. Everything. They, that's that's not <laughs> allegedly. <life>. Right. <laughs> that's not allegedly. That's, that's not speculations. <laughs> that's pure fact. Yes. It all came from us. Mm-hmm. If because if it wasn't for us, there really wouldn't, there wouldn't be, be anything. anything. And it wouldn't so, even be light. Right. And then I had gave her a book. I totally forgot the freaking name of the book, but I had gave her a book and I was like, well, girl, you got to read this and this will let you know, you know, what inventions, like when it came to, um, uh, like the comb and all mm. the other stuff, stop light, electricity, uh, yes. the front porch, all that yeah. stuff came from black people. This mm-hmm. book would tell you cars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. The only thing white people came up with was religion, but let me, uh, but, right. <laughs> but what was what, what what do you say to your kids about I say exactly their blackness? What, I, and I first and foremost, I told them to be proud of it because the first issue that I had that I noticed with my kids was being proud of their hair, their texture. That was the first being proud conversation that I had with my kids because my daughters didn't like their hair as babies because they thought it didn't look like they they white and Mexican friends. So that was a conversation. But um, ever since I realized that that was going to be something that I needed to address in my household, um, we talk about everything. We talk about we talked about uh, segregation and desegregation and integration. We talked about uh, the civil rights movement. We and we went farther than just Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. We right went, and know, Rosa Parks. And Rosa Parks, you know, who we didn't do nothing but just sit on the bus. Just, <laughs> just sit her ass down. She was tired. Um, you know, we 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 went uh, we went all the way into it. Went and went to the. Um, the crack epidemic, you know, why black men are not in the ho- in the household yeah. as much as white men. Right, um, and since you brought that up, let me run down a brief history for those who don't know. Mm-hmm. After cause the Black Panther movement came out in the 60s and the 70s. Yeah, the early top, the late sev- the late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, where disco had died, which I feel bad because <laughs> I love disco music. But anyway, <laughs> uh, that's where Bloods and Crips had came from. Mm-hmm. The um, Black Panthers will have guns and they were licensed mm-hmm. they would have guns and they were um they were ride around in the car well some of them a good mm-hmm. chunk of them would ride around with the cb radios and stuff and hear um uh, policemen pulling black people over mm-hmm. and they would go over and watch how they did their job right and and then even after that they had stormed to like state capital or in uh california and all that stuff and then Coincidentally, NRA came out with these gun laws and all that stuff, but that's a whole other story. But the Black Panther movement was basically the empowerment and to forward the black to you know bring black people into where we are. We are important. We are here, so we need y'all to respect us. Right. That's basically what the Black Panther movement was about. And then the federal government the FBI or the CIA Mm -hmm. made particular plans uh, to dismantle the Mm -hmm. Black Panther movement. And then from that came the Bloods and Crips, who were the the protectors. Yeah, they were all Crips at first. Right, yeah, they were protectors of the the black neighborhood where they lived in the neighborhood where it's majority of people that they knew, majority of black people. And, Mm -hmm. but then... Here comes the 70s. Mm-hmm. Here comes the crack epidemic. Crack. The 80s. The 80s. Yeah, the 80s. Mm-hmm. Here comes the crack epidemic. And mm-hmm. then here comes AIDS and yep. all this other it stuff. Was, it was 
crack and hip hop. It was like almost it went hand in hand. Hand in hand. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of people don't know a lot of uh, the the musicians or the rappers that you like to listen to in the eighties. They were owned by Jews. Let me <laughs> they were owned, by, owned by white people, <laughs> right? Yeah, who pushed that agenda? Who pushed that agenda yeah. of the gangster rap? The gangster rap, because hip hop was not like that. No, it was hip. It was strictly hip hop. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it was. It wasn't yeah. violent. It was not violent. Yeah, it was just hip-hop, like um, hip-hop, the hip, the hip, the hip, hip hop. You don't stop. It, it, like it, it, all did it that. Come from, it, did it come from soul or it came from? It was one music genre that hip hop kind of came from and kind of just made it its own. Yeah, I can't remember it came genre. from like, you know, you you just wanted to party yeah. with other people. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of social injustices that came from, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, that fed into hip hop. But right. it wasn't until like later where you got, you got this gangsters rap. Gangsters rap who was gangsters fueled rap. by a Jewish white man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, then yeah. with crack being dropped off in black neighborhoods on purpose with HIV being dropped off in mm-hmm. black neighborhoods on purpose in the African continent on purpose mm-hmm. or and was created in a laboratory with all this stuff going on. And then right around that time, the laws change yeah. on how much drug, the drug charges. And it's kind of, it, and it's not crazy. It was, it was systematic. Yeah. So they changed the, the law on how much time you would get uh, for a certain drug the same time that the crack came. So right. it's like, yeah. we finna go ahead and lock right. all y'all up. And then they took jobs out of the neighborhood. Took jobs. Because if you want to, if you want to build a neighborhood, you have to put jobs in that said neighborhood mm-hmm. in order to build it. But if you're taking the jobs out to where the only thing around is uh, gas stations or corner stores that sell malt liquor and all of that, because mm-hmm. some folks tell that malt liquor was put in a black community for a purpose also yeah. but if you're te- if you're taking away jobs you're taking away opportunities the only thing that left is corner stores malt liquor and drugs and guns mm-hmm. of course they're going to resort to that if it's bringing them some kind of money right because they can't go out into other neighborhoods right they're not allowed to make there. money yeah they're not allowed there mm-hmm. and then with the the whole crack epidemic you had the like like i said the father's being taken away from the home put yeah. thrown in jail for 20 30 years off a little bit a little bit of drugs right and then you would have the single moms out here okay well the single moms now they stressed out now they using crack now they taking away the babies <clears> so <throat> you got the government coming in and putting the babies in foster care and leaving the, where they're molested where they molested yeah. and you know broke down up the whole more black and more. family yeah, so they just yeah. they just broke down the black family, but the first thing they had to do was get the daddy, get that man out of yeah. there. Yeah, and then but the rest of it was. This you know. started with integration. Yes. yes. If if y'all it not is. if y'all not following, following what we're what doing, we're saying, yeah. this started with integration. This started mm-hmm. with black people being allowed to go in certain areas because e- before, um, before integration, mm-hmm. or even during Jim Crow laws, black people were succumb to certain neighborhoods Mm -hmm. and they strived in those neighborhoods Mm -hmm. Tulsa Oklahoma being one of those where black people lived there shopped there bought Mm -hmm. things there sold things there everything was there because they weren't allowed to go outside of their community Mm -hmm. so before black people were you know before we were allowed to be in places like this Mm -hmm. (laughs) right right (laughs) black people had their own neighborhoods and they were doing perfectly fine Mm -hmm. when they were left with their own devices. Right, right. And that's what the thing, civil rights wasn't about integration. It was all about desegregation. They just wanted to be, they didn't want to be segregated. They didn't want to say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Right. They They didn't say, let me go to school with your daughters. They weren't asking for that. They was asking to just be desegregated, yeah. not integrated. Right. Let me get the same like books the, your kids are getting. Right. That's like how it was. Uh, the the boy the bus boycott. Like mm-hmm. when I said it was, it's all about money. These yeah. uh, integration and all. It was all about money yeah, because about money. for those who don't know about the bus boycott that happened in 1955, which wasn't that damn long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, black people were allowed were only allowed on the back of the bus. White people had to ride in the front, and black people was getting tired of it. Mm-hmm. And then, but the thing is, other white people, people could ride anywhere on the bus. Yeah, black people had to go in the back. But yeah, that was just a little tidbit, yeah. Right, and so um, not to take away from Rosa Parks, she wasn't the first one that she sure that happened not. to. But mm-hmm. you know, she you, the fact that she worked with 
certain the people. Yeah, yeah, she mm-hmm. worked with some. She knew some people, and so she was able to go viral back in mm-hmm. back right. In those days. She went viral. Right. <laughs> yeah, she saw it. Yeah, she saw it. Right, and so that kicked off the boys' boycott. And so what had happened was. Black people stopped riding the bus, mm-hmm. and so year. yeah, and they started carpooling and taxis and yeah. walking, and then but that was and then eventually they made uh, carpooling illegal, mm-hmm. and then because black people weren't riding the bus, only white people were riding the bus, mm-hmm. and so, but that was they were making less money yeah. because black people weren't riding, riding the bus it. because and white so, people mostly had cars exactly, and so, then. Yeah the fact that black less black people were riding, they weren't able to make as much money. And so they had to, uh, cut down certain bus routes. Mm -hmm. And so that means certain people can go to work. And then some of those people worked for the, the state Capitol. Mm -hmm. I was about to cuss, but Mm -hmm. some (laughs) a good amount of those people was working for the state Capitol. And now they can't get Get away to to, work, to work. And that's messing up the government. And so they was like, all right, you Negroes, then <laughs> y'all can sit up here. Y'all you. can sit up in the front, I guess. I guess. I guess. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but but that's what happened. It's all about money. money. And it's all in, in a strategic day, plan. Mm-hmm. And to, so uh, the fact that we went through, or our people went through, mm-hmm. My, my grandmother, because that wasn't too long ago. Yeah. The fact that our, our grandparents or great grandparents had went through all of this during the time where integration was legal with all the stuff that happened, because if it wasn't for integration, there wouldn't be no Jim Crow laws. There wouldn't be the KKK. There wouldn't be None any of that, that. Uh, voting poll, uh, voting taxes and all that stuff. Uh, were we better before slavery had ended or before integration? Were I say better as a uh, a internal community? Yeah, yeah like, better as far as kids, like you know, just what we were doing as people, we were better. But like I said, overall, no, because anybody could do anything to you, and there was nothing that you could do about it. Yeah, that's what I don't. That's why I say no, because now at least maybe you know you can they'll get they'll try to get them now. You right. know what I'm saying? But back then, you call the police and say, "Hey, somebody came in here, even if it was another black person. Somebody came in my house and did this and did that. They don't care. But I mean, your was, uncles had to take care of it. That's what was cool about the Black Panther Party, though. They used to do like nightly neighborhood patrols and police our own communities and everything. We wouldn't right. have to call the police, right? And, and we didn't. Right. And we didn't need it. We really didn't need it like that before segregation because we didn't. We wasn't hurting our own people. No. But what I'm saying is that we wouldn't hurt anybody. We wasn't hurting. Yeah, we wasn't hurting anybody. But we weren't hurting our own people. But what I'm saying is that even if you needed it, you couldn't. Women yeah. couldn't get to the hospital if somebody fell and broke their arm. They had to get taped up in the backyard like it wasn't it was certain <laughs> stuff that we just couldn't have yeah. or have access to being segregated but do you um you rather but i love have, the you, idea you rather have no love or you rather have love and then lost it's one of those things do you rather have it and lose it or just never not have, have it, it at all, all? um because i'd rather now, have it and lose it you do yeah because i i would i would hate to go through life we talking about love or just the segregation well, no thing? but no I, I said love, but that yeah. plays into um, integration and segregation. Like, would you rather just not have those rights at all or have those rights and be violated under those rights? Yeah. Um. I mean, both of them, it's like it's a double-edged sword. They both yeah. messed up. You but girl, you had to pick a side. Jeez. They both messed up, but I would <laughs> rather have and then have the rights and then have, have them the violated. Rights. I mean, at least I have some type of rights. Not having no rights at all. I would hate if me living my 39 years now, being able to have some Girl, type of rights. Girl, I didn't know you was that old. Jesus. 39. <laughs> having my rights now and going back to not having none at all. No, I don't I don't see myself. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I ain't like that old. I'm 39. You see, it's like because they haven't been 39. violated on you? No, it's because I... I, I I can't say that I felt blatant discrimination yeah. or blatant but, racism. See, I have. But I would, I've been around people who have. And I wouldn't, yeah. I'm just saying, I would not want to be just out here butt naked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At least give me a loincloth. Right. If I'm going to have something. <laughs> I don't just want to be out here just all out. So that's why I say I'd rather 
have something rather than nothing at all. Yeah. Well, there's been times where I, I've been pulled over just because, from what they say, I turned right into the second lane instead of the first one. Mm-hmm. And then it just let me go. But the fact that I was pulled over, I'm just like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. Why was I being, you know, why am I being subjugated to all this when I haven't really broken any really laws that Mm -hmm. will hurt people? Mm -hmm. So so that's why I asked the question, do you want to have those laws and then have them being violated? Or do you just rather just not have those laws, period? Let me just say this. And this is probably why I'm saying what I'm saying. When my daughter was uh seven and seven and two, they were with their daddy. He's an ex military. Uh, he's a veteran. They was with him in Irving. They he uh, at the time we didn't have a vehicle, so he had to take the bus, walk to the store, and take the bus back and walk walk yeah. the rest of the way. But anyway, um, three police cars ran up on him at the bus stop. It was nighttime. It was like right at the beginning of night, so it was after eight something. Three three police cars ran up on him. And um, and my daughters at the bus stop. And then, I'm glad y'all listening. I am listening, but Gary, <laughs> I mean, Teddy won't stop the sneezing. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, anyway, right. um, they ran up on him. They racially profiled him. Basically, they you know put him in handcuffs. They pulled my daughters to the side, asked him who this man was. He has groceries sitting up here. He has a box of pizza. He look. He don't. He don't have no type of weapons or anything. They pat him down. They ask him why he was out there. And then when they see his military ID, then they want to be like, oh, let me let you out these cuffs. Let me do this. Let me do that. Mm. Asking my daughters, well, who is this man to you? Is this your dad? Why mm. are y'all out here? This and the other. If we were prior to segregation, they could have killed him. Yeah. With no remorse and with no explanation. Now, I'm not saying that that don't happen now. But what I'm saying is that they could have just shot him in front of his girls and told and did whatever to my daughters yeah. and nothing would have happened to them. But now that we do are under some type of umbrella of law, they won't, they could do it, but they're not going to do it. They will not, they would try to do it less than they did back then. And then, yeah, you know what I mean. So that's why I say I'd rather have something versus, versus nothing. I don't want to be out here where you could just do anything to me anytime you want yeah. to, and then I can't call nobody to help me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I get what you're saying, but I'm the opposite. And I understand that too. I rather because I don't I don't like something given to me and then being taken away from me just because someone said something or someone is alleging something. Yeah. I, re- I just don't give it to me at all. That's why I said it's a double it's, it's the both like, sides. Like like when, like when parents say don't cuss because you ain't grown. I'm just like just tell me not to cuss. Like mm-hmm. just don't give me the right to something or the privilege mm-hmm. to do something. And, and then, then just because um you felt necessary mm-hmm. to take it away from me. Like I just rather just not have it. Mm-hmm. Don't give me something then say there's limitations to it. Don't my fat ass, don't give me a twink and say I can only have right. it. Like don't do that to me. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I feel about it. I just rather just not have it at all. Right. Don't tease me with something and then just because you felt it necessary to take it away, mm-hmm. then you take it away, and then especially what's going on now, mm-hmm. and then even not now, but like a year or two ago, where you know, with the Karen whole thing, where uh, white people are calling the police on black people just because, yeah. and then black people are pulling over. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, but the police are pulling over black people just because, mm-hmm. and then the guy that um told him he had a license for a weapon and I have a weapon mm-hmm. and then he goes to reach for his ID or something and then they you know they end up shooting mm-hmm. him in front of his his girlfriend or baby mama or and his child. Yeah. Like I just don't give it to me mm-hmm. and then when it suffice for you, mm-hmm. you take it away from me. I you know I, I, I don't like, like it. That sounds like gentrification. Yeah. Like y'all moved away from us, y'all. What was the white, right. white didn't white, want us in your neighborhoods and moved, and, and then, then now we don't put all this culture and time and ethnicity into these communities. Now you want to be right, but not even that. The fact that the government neglected us and and kind of left us alone with drugs and diseases and all the other stuff, mm-hmm. and then we then the com, the so called community or the neighborhood is run down, mm-hmm. and then the property the property value is low, low and then you come in 
with your money and then come in and buy it up and then kick us out. Yeah, and kick us out because mm-hmm. you kicked up the uh the value of it to where mm-hmm. we have to pay more rent or we have to pay more on a mortgage and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Like when well, you know we can't afford it. Exactly. If we, if we could afford it, we wouldn't be living here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I totally understand what you're saying. Like I'm not saying that either one of our opinions is right, but we just have different views because yeah. we live you know, we live different lives. But um yeah, do I do you say so? So let's end on this. Do you think that black people will ever get to the point where we have equality across the board? No, I don't think so. The fact that we're still fighting the same battle that we did a hundred years ago, mm-hmm. or not even a hundred years ago, fifty to sixty years ago. Mm-hmm. The fact that we're still dealing with the same thing. No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. If we do, it won't be in our lifetime right. and it won't be in the next generation's lifetime. Like I have a little sister uh, that's coming up. And even though she's like, I don't see color, don't say white people, don't say black. Like, even though she's like that, I still feel as though there's going to be some grandfather or mm-hmm. some father that's going to have just like the the Aubrey case. Yeah. Like you're gonna have, yeah. yeah, you're gonna have some kids who were taught by their parents that black people are less than, or black people are, subhuman. yeah, are subhuman. Mm-hmm. There's always gonna be hate there. Mm-hmm. We, but like we we have, there's always gonna be a yin and a yang. There's all, there's always gonna be some people who see certain things, and then there's gonna be the complete opposite of it. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think that in this country we're we're never gonna see total equality Mm -hmm. for us to do that we're either going to be segregated or we're going to have to move to back to africa that's Mm -hmm. the only way i see it Mm -hmm. it's the only way i see it because europeans have influenced um the world negatively let me say that negatively influenced the world like Mm -hmm. the original buddha and and all they look like black people and if you look at the original people or the the natives Mm -hmm. of every land besides you know, like yeah. um, Europe, yeah, up there, yeah. Everybody there, the the original people, look like Africans. So they look like black people. people. Yeah, a right. friend of mine was telling me about all that. Yeah, so, yeah. but if if you're the if Caucus. if right if you're the if you're a group of people that sees one race is better than the other, we're we're, we're never gonna we're never gonna get anywhere. And it's pure evil and jealous. Right. That's all it is. And then even now, um. The only difference between then and now, the, it's less of a race kind of thing. It's more of a class kind of thing. Yeah. Because yeah. now we have white people and Mexicans going through the same thing that we're going through, mm-hmm. where, you know, we make less money. We have, you know, we're mm-hmm. subjugated to certain things. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, there's never going to be equality if people are out there thinking they're better than another race or they think they have more money than other people or they feel like they should be treated a different way because they have these certain things with them it's it's never going to be equality so do you think it'll change from a um a race thing to it'll be all the way a class thing would it be like whoever's in this yeah, class it's moving to, in that yeah class, it's moving towards it's that gonna, now it's gonna kind of blur it's moving towards that now lines. we have trailer park trash white people now we always had that. that's what the Ku Klux Klan is right we have those people now but now <laughs> now we have um we have white people and we have Mexicans it's like Oh, now I see why black people are so mad, especially with the 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 girl that opened the salon in Dallas that she was talking about yeah. the, the you know the other day or whatever. You you have those people that's like, oh, this is what this what it feel like to be right. discriminated. Re- yeah, it's like, oh, this cool. what this is what black people were talking about this whole time. This is how I feel to not have your basic human rights. Right? What? Yeah. And yeah. girl, you only was in a jail for two hours. Stop playing with me. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna have that now, and that's what it's moving towards to. I think ever since uh as history is told as as history has told itself, I'm gonna need y'all to look up certain things. As history has told itself, white people like that's why we have job unions. Mm-hmm. Because white people were like, I don't wanna be treated as a as a slave. Mm-hmm. I want to make this amount of money and I want to have my working conditions in this standards mm-hmm. these are my demands yeah, these yeah. are my demands that's where unions came from it came from the, it came from white people looking at black people and were like oh don't we don't do want to do that yeah and, <laughs> yeah but now it's more of a it's it's moving towards a class thing but 
we can't get past the race thing. Mm-hmm. Well, not and it's even not race. even us though. Yeah, because we the most inclusive. We include everybody, just like your your sister. I don't see color. That's how my kids be saying. Yeah, I, I hate that she color. say that, I but I hate that color. she say that though. Yeah. But that's a whole another conversation. Because I'm just like, girl, you don't see color, but they do. The world does. Mm-hmm. That's the this part that kind of makes me cry. But we're gonna end this show. We're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, we might have to continue this next week. Okay, you know I'm always. We, yeah, there. we might have to, but um. We got dip. We Please got dip be known. Um, we're just here talking about struggles. This week was very, very special to us. This particular episode and next week will probably be us continuing this conversation. And please comment and like, share, whatever, subscribe, all that good stuff. All of it, y'all. Right, all that jazz. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, we're gonna continue this uh, conversation next week. It needs I think to be so. had. It, it's important. Yeah, especially since Juneteenth is coming up, and then Black people can't go out and celebrate like we want to. Child, these folks been out since wrong since the top of. They ain't stayed in the house. Yeah, but we can't do it like we want to. But ne- yeah, next week, especially since Juneteenth is creeping up on us, we gonna we gonna continue this conversation. Okay. We're gonna continue talking about race relations and segregation and integration and all that other stuff. Integration, tribulation, nation, nation, <laughs> obligation, humiliation, <laughs> obligation to our nation. But <laughs> let's go. All right. All right. We'll talk to y'all next week. Peace, Peace in the Middle well. East. Peace and hair grease. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. I'm just trying to get rich. I can't go where the paper don't flow. I can't hang if you ain't about the dough. Let's get rich. If you stagnant, not worry about no bread. Ain't no way that you could get ahead. I'm trying to get rich. Stacking paper, trying to live a better life. I can't be broke, worry about no jewels and nice. Let's get rich. I can't go where the paper don't flow. Hey.